I'm Richard Robillard, and I want to tell you about how much sound is too much. And to be honest, it depends. Some headphones come with a warning that will say, after 80 decibels, that sound is too much. But how much is too much? Health professionals will tell you that at 85 decibels, people will start to hear less. And after five days and eight hours, like after a long time where you are experiencing 85 decibels or more, you can experience hearing loss. But how much is really too much? How much is 85 decibels? Well, whispering starts you off at 30 decibels. A fridge will hum at 40 decibels. This furnace I can hear behind me is running at 45 decibels. An ambulance siren will go at an alarming 120 decibels. And at a nightclub or a concert venue, you can hear the sound going anywhere from 110 to 120 decibels. In fact, long-term exposure to any loud noise can cause what is called tinnitus. And what is tinnitus? Tinnitus is that ringing that you'll get in your ears. Sometimes if you've gone to a concert, right? You've gone to ACDC, all right? You've heard some metal, all right? And you get home and you're hearing that ringing in your ears, that's tinnitus. But over a long period of time, if you're experiencing loud levels of music, you can have tinnitus for the rest of your life. And it actually can cost you your hearing. You get tinnitus possibly in one ear, both ears, or you'll actually hear it in between ears. It's almost like it's in your head. 10 to 15% of people have tinnitus of some sort or some sort of hearing loss that is related to sound. 1 to 2% have it really bad. In fact, there was a mockumentary that was made called It's All Gone, Pete Tong, which is talking about a DJ who used to listen to extremely loud music all the time. That was his job. He had to sit in a nightclub, he was listening to, listening to music, and he went deaf from listening to all the music and all he could hear was ringing, but he still performed anyways. So let's talk about some artists that have tinnitus currently. Neil Young. Neil Young is a great artist. He's been performing for years, but now he makes his songs softer and people will argue that he makes his songs softer and less rocky because he can't stand the heavy music anymore because the tinnitus is ringing in his ears. Ozzy Osbourne. All you need to do is watch the Ozzy Osbourne show to tell you how much he can't hear anything. Eric Clapton, Pete Townsend, another one, Phil Collins. Phil Collins actually stopped touring for a while because he can't hear the only sounds that he's making and he wants to make sure that he's a perfectionist. So he wants to make sure that he can hear everything that he's playing. George uh, Marlin, or Martin, the fifth Beatle, stopped producing because he can't perfect the sounds anymore and he has tinnitus in his ear. Will I Am. Now it can be argued that Will I Am is not making great quality music anyways, but Will I Am is obsessed with making quality music or making music, period, because he can't stand periods of silence. He actually has ringing in his ears when it's silent, so he just constantly makes music. It can be argued whether it's great or not. Now, how much is too much sound. Again, it depends on the person. Now, at 120 decibels, all right, so at the loudest you're going to hear at a typical bar or typical nightclub, pain can start to set in at 120 decibels. Beyond that, it'll start to actually affect your body. And humans can actually feel it in their organs, and at 145 decibels, you're running the risk of death. Humans can die at 145 decibels. In the Netherlands, the European Space Agency actually has a speaker that is 16 feet tall by 11 feet wide, and it can produce, when you have the amplification up to 400,000 kilowatts, or 400,000 watts, it can actually produce 154 decibels of sound. That is definitely enough to kill somebody. Luckily, in this particular building, it is used to test space equipment, and it can't even be turned on while there's still humans in the, in the, uh, in the room where it's situated. 
Um, the sound of 154 decibels would be the sound of several jets taking off at the exact same time right beside you. All right, but you will never hear that sound. On the other hand, what is the quietest you could possibly go? Well, there's a lab in Minnesota that has a room full of baffles, and a, it's a really cool looking room. The sound that is produced in there is so low that it actually registers a minus on the decibel scale, up to minus nine decibels, which is a Guinness Book of World Record for lowest or quietest sound. All right, in there, it is so quiet, you can actually hear your blood flow. You can hear your organs working. And it's actually so quiet that people cannot stand being in that room for more than 45 minutes. People have actually hallucinated, people have run out of there. So that is the quietest you can go. So how much sound is too much? It depends on you. If the sound is constant and it's always there, you might want to turn it down a little bit. If it's too loud, then make sure you're taking proper precautions. You will notice that most artists will be wearing hearing protection when they're performing. So if you're going to concerts on a regular basis, I would strongly recommend turning it down a notch. This is Richard Robillard.